Hello, so welcome back to DM's Montreal Beer Review. Yes, I'm back. Um, yeah, so I'm doing my travels, well, which has taken a toll on me, I guess. Whole thing. Um, managed to bring a few beers back home. Surprisingly, didn't really expect to, but just didn't have time to drink them really. Um, this is Fuller's Honeydew Organic Ale, and I'll be reviewing that soon. Looking forward to that. It's actually from Sainsbury, it's not bought anywhere outside of the UK, it was from there. And this is Leffy Ruby, this is a fruit version of the beer. Uh, now I know people would say why bother making a fruit beer from the same company that makes those stronger Abbey style ales. I don't know, but uh, it was a decent beer, I'll review it anyway. And it's a funny bottle they use in uh, France and other European countries, smaller one. Uh, for today I managed to um, pick a beer, didn't have much time to you know, ponder to think about it, uh, but since I've tried and reviewed some Hefeweizen over the summer, I decided to you know, put a full stop to the saga, maybe not a full stop for a while, I just want to switch to other beers, but um, I'm going to end this period in my life, I uh, think Hefeweizen, with ha Haka Pshor, which is uh, another Munich uh, traditional hefe advice. Um, this is one of the first ones I've ever tried after Paul Anna and uh, I think there's one more I've tried. I uh, don't remember which one. But I had it a few times and I haven't had it for a while as of now so I decided to review it with proper glassware. Once again this is my newly acquired Schneider Weiser glass. I haven't reviewed the beer I know but I will sometime soon. And I'm going to use my London Underground their opener key ring. So let's get reviewing, we're all set pretty much. Okay, so let's open the bottle and I'll talk about the brand a bit. Hackapshore is a brand that makes, uh, I mean, brewery, uh, dates back to the, I think, yeah, 15th century, even before the purity law came about. Um, and they make about 15 different traditional Bavarian uh, beer styles. Now, this is the only one I've tried, this is the only one we get here. This is so widely available, you know, sold everywhere in Canada, I think, and at least in the bigger provinces, maybe not in the uh, Maritimes, some you know, law, different uh, federal law, and I mean, provincial law, reason, I don't know. But yeah, it's not getting enough attention, in my opinion, because, uh, you know, Paul and uh, things like that, have even Schneider Weiss uh, gets more attention, but as I remember, it was a really good, um, Wheat beer all around. Now we'll see how that compares to what my uh, current expectations in the beer are. Sunday. Okay, as always with you know, if, if you know how to do it, I only learnt it recently. I mean, I knew about it that you have to um, swirl the bottle up and get all the sediments. Yeah, it's pretty easy for pour. I really like the labeling on this one, even though they changed it a little bit. Picture of a man, I'm not sure who it is, and I'm gonna make uh, false you know, guesses. But you know, and this is five and a half ABV, really, really standard for German Bavarian, specifically uh, heavy license. Uh, half litre bottle, this weird green brown glass. Uh, nothing else about it, really, it doesn't say much about it, it just says uh, list of ingredients. So, without further ado, Mm, wonderful, robust, uh, wheaty smell. Get some banana, a bit of a clove uh, aroma. And also getting lemon. Yeah. And the body of the beer, cloudy, bubbly. I'd say this is orange more than yellow or brown or anything like that. So yeah, cloudy orange, loads of bubbles coming up. A really creamy head, not the richest head I've ever seen in a half wise, and it has to do with my pool, I guess. But, you yeah, know, it's very good, so I'm happy I got this glass because I have to get those weird looking glasses instead and they don't do the job properly. Um, head is white, maybe off white, just beige, maybe not, not nothing special there. So. Uh, so, yeah, this is um, the way I see a Bavarian hefs, they usually are either fruity or spicy sort of like but they're usually a mixture of both but you cannot definitely classify each one of the beers as you know prevalently like 
predominantly spicy beer or more fruity um, tender kind of beer. This one is definitely more fruity than spicy. I smell loads of wheat, loads of banana and citrus as well. It's less spicy. So more more like uh, that Spalska reviewed last and maybe um, Koenig Ludwig Weiss beer. Cheers, let's give it a try. Good. This is really good. As many times as I've said that I'm not a heifer wise well, a fan anymore, this is very good. It has that roasty touch to it. I don't know why. It has to do the malt, so the wheat. Very first quenching of sure. Um, what else can I say about it? And the flavour is pretty much the same as I described with the aroma. Sweetness with that wheaty um, touch to it. Very bready kind of finish. I get lemon and get banana. I get a bit of a spice in as well, but not too much in this one. Um, pretty balanced sweetness. I like this in this one. The only thing I, I think is a bit. Um, Holding me from giving this like a top grade is the carbonation which affects the mouthfeel. It's, it's, it's a bit on the high side, I guess. Very fizzy, it's, you know, effervescent. But oh, yeah, overall, it's very good. Hmm. It's not a light body beer, it's more medium body, I guess. Be able to enjoy it without, you know thinking um, it's a bit watered down maybe. Right. Anyways I'll come back to you. Uh, as of now I think um, it's just as good as I try as, as it was when I tried the first time. Um, I'm not going to give this a low grade. This is a very good beer. It's going to go in the high uh, grades. Right there. Hmm. This is a proper true uh, Bavarian heifer lighting. That's all I can say for now. Um, as I've anticipated this is going to get a high mark from me, I'm going to give this an 8 out of 10. Yeah, it's a very good beer. Um, thinking compared to the last beer I reviewed, uh, with Bartica Wheat, number 8, um, this is about the same, even though this is authentic and that was not. So, um, yeah, very enjoyable, very drinkable, first quenching, um, nice and fruity, nice and it's not light in flavour, nor it is light in uh, body, but you know, it's, it's nothing too overwhelming. Uh, thinking of that, actually, it could be a really good introduction to the world of real beer for people who like, you know, light beers and just macro lagers, or if you're in Europe, you're know, Heineken, same thing. So no matter what you are, you can always find people drinking macro things, um, regardless of location, I guess. But yeah, for me, it kind of played the role as well, even though I was into Poland, and Poland was probably my introduction to the real bit. But uh, yeah, I've tried this about the same time, and I like this, and this is still good. I mean, I'm not, not a fan of half license as, as much as I was before, but um, I have to say this is a really good summer beer. And if you're really into um, half license, you can drink this all year long and without feeling, you know, that you're doing something wrong and you're not. Uh, but yeah, 8 out of 10 for uh, Hack Up Shore, Heifer uh, um, I think I'm going to get ended here and um, I'll resume my regular beer review probably starting next week. I have to finish up my season 3. I, I for sure have enough beer to review. I'm probably going to buy some more. I kind of left too long ago. Um, buying beer, I guess. But yeah, that's about all I have to say for now. Good beer. I'm glad that I re-review this. I've never actually reviewed this, so I'm glad I've revisited this. And thanks for watching. Cheers to all of you. Bye.